Unveiling Strong Delusion, Video 34, Jesus in the Old Testament, Part 1, Jesus and His Family. Biblical scholars have a concept called typology, which looks for types in the Old Testament that prefigure the New Testament. Many aspects of typology seek to show predictions or prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament. This series of videos tries to show that much of the Old Testament particularly the Torah and Joshua, occurred at the same time as the New Testament, around the 12th and 13th centuries. The next few videos will try to identify Jesus with a particular Old Testament figure. Is, this not, is, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him, Mark 6.3. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? Matthew thirteen fifty-five to 56 There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. Mark 3.31 but other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother, Galatians 1.19. This basically sums up the family of Jesus, except for Thomas, who we will see later in this video. The idea that Jesus could have brothers and sisters did not fit with the Catholic idea of the perpetual Virgin Mary. Jerome argued that by brothers and sisters, the New Testament meant cousins. Others have argued that Joseph had children by another wife born before Mary. Some have argued that Jesus and Joseph mean the same person because of the similarity of the consonants. But in Spanish, in the Spanish New Testament, they use Jose, and in the Italian, they use Giuseppe. Both mean uh, Joseph. I don't think we have any real names of anyone, but instead we have descriptive titles or nicknames. Real names have power. Scholars have diametrically opposed views about Jesus' social class. Bart Ehrman called Jesus a lower-class Jewish preacher from the backwaters of rural Galilee, how Jesus became God. In contrast, Ralph Ellis has written a series of books arguing that Jesus descended from Egyptian pharaohs and more directly from Cleopatra, his great-grandmother by way of Julius Caesar. Cleopatra to Christ, Jesus last of the pharaohs, King Jesus, and Jesus King of Edessa. I think Ellis has gotten many things right, but his adherence to the standard history and geography of the biblical stories and Roman history prevents him from taking the last steps. Ellis puts Edessa in Syria, as do reputable scholars. And here we have Edessa de Montilla in northern Spain near Basque country. And here we have a more distant view of it, Edissa de Montilla in northern Spain. Here we have the country of Aquitaine, ruled by Eleanor of Aquitaine and her ancestors, and then by her son, Richard the Lionheart, also the king of England. And I think that this kingdom of Aquitaine actually went all the way across southern France and into the Po River Valley, maybe to Venice. And down here we have Barcelona, the real Jer Jerusalem. And here we have Andorra. I wanted to put this in because I can't make a full video of this. And here we have uh, a painting by Benjamin West of the Witch of Endor, where Saul went to the Witch of Endor to call up the, the Samuel. And the Witch of Endor won Samuel 28, 7 to 25. And Endor, or Eindor, or Eindor, Strong's Hebrew 5874, from Ein, Ayan, or I, or Fountain, Strong's Hebrew 5869, and Dor, all, many, or generation, Strong's Hebrew 1755. Andorra just needs an A-E vowel shift to become Endor. And remember, the Masoretes, or Masonites, made up the Hebrew vowels. Ein Sof, God, the infinite, boundless in the Kabbalah. And here we have Cleopatra with red hair. 
Now, Ralph Ellis, in his book, Cleopatra to Christ, says that Jesus descends from Cleopatra and that Cleopatra had a daughter with Julius Caesar just before his death. And that then the next emperor, Augustus or Octavian, gave the daughter named Theo, uh, Thea uh, Muse Orania, or the goddess of the sky, to the king of Parthia. And Fomenko identifies Parthia with France. Italian folklorist Giuseppe Petri, Petre wrote, According to popular traditions, Jesus, Jesus Christ's hair tended to be red. He also said two reds were faithful, Jesus Christ and the heifer from Sorrento. And that refers to Numbers 19, 2-3, where Eleazar sacrifices the red heifer. Aristotle reportedly said, fishermen, divers from Murex, and generally those who work at, whose work is on the sea have red hair. The Phoenician purple dye, Tyrian, or royal purple, comes from the Murex sea snail. The word tyrant may come from this Tyrian purple dye. Scholars differ on whether the word Phoenician means red or purple. In Hebrew, Adam and Edom mean red. Strong's Hebrew 119, 120, 122, and 123. And here we have the crucifix by Giotto di Bondone, uh, which I showed you before, and I mentioned before that Bondone might have actually known or seen Christ, and we see this portrait of Jesus as a younger man, and perhaps the younger Jesus sat for Giotto uh, for, that, uh, for that painting. And here we have Bondone, in northern Italy, just west of Lake Garda, and Lake Garda derives from, uh, Garda means guard or watcher, as in the watchers in the fallen angels. Here we have Verona, where uh, Jacob della Scala, or Jacopo della Scala, founded the ruling family, which had close connections to the uh, rulers of Milano, or Milan, and later the family of Jacob, built La Scala Opera House, the most important opera house in the world. And of course, La Scala means the stairway to heaven, which Jacob saw. And the U.S. military, and I've mentioned before that the U.S. military tends to have bases in, in important religious places, used to have its uh, command post for CTAF, the Southern European Task Force here in Verona. The military still has a base here in Vicenza, meaning Vicenza has important biblical connections. And up here, you, although you can't see it, there's Aviano, and the military has an Air Force base, fit, fittingly for a place called Aviano. And of course, here we have Venice and Padova. And uh, uh, these Shakespeare wrote a lot of his plays in this area. Uh, we have the two gentlemen of Verona, which took place in Verona and in Milano. Uh, we have Romeo and Juliet from Verona. We have the taming of the shrew in Padova, or Padua in English. We have the Merchant of Venice with Otello, the Moor, and Iago, and Iago means James in Spanish, and Emilia, the, the wife of uh, Iago, and, uh, and then uh, Joseph Atwell uh, in, wrote a book called uh, Shakespeare's Messiah, in which he ir uh, argues a woman named Emilia Bassano wrote Shakespeare's works and coded a lot of biblical material into the works. And here we have uh, Bassano del Gra de Grappa, which is right near uh, Vicenza, in the province of Vicenza. And, and, uh, and this is where Emilia Bassano's family came from before they moved to England. And here we have the Tyr Tyrrhenian Sea, where logically the, the Tyre would have been. And I think that at one point, Rome had the name Tyre, and that's where Hiram, the builder of Solomon's temple, came from. And here we have the Isola Maddalena, and Maddalena means Magdalene, as in Mary Magdalene. And of course, the Navy, U.S. Navy, has a naval base there. And here we have Tyrion Lannister with red hair. And if anybody has watched the Game of Thrones series, I think that gives us an allegory of our actual history with the Lannister family perhaps portraying, in not a great light, the family of Jesus. And... Uh, Daenerys Targaryen portraying Moses. And here we have the Washington Redskins, who just got rid of this name. They're now called the Washington football team. 
But I think that beyond the so-called racist uh, reasons for dumping it in this Black Lives Matter time, if you look at this this figure, he has the two feathers like Queen T that we saw in the last video on Akhenaten, and she Queen T's feathers pointed up, and she wore a, a crown with the solar disk, the Aten, and the two feathers above it. And here around this figure, we have the solar disk, just a football team. And here we have a red-haired L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, who grew up in Helena, Montana. I had no idea about this until I searched red-haired people, and this put him in the video. <clears throat> and here we have the dioceses of Helena in Montana. And this, the western uh, border of Montana has the face of Minos from Michelangelo's Last Supper right here. And Helena, of course, was the mother of Constantine the Great. And I've shown this picture before. Here we have Shamut, which means death by holocaust or death by fire, like death on the stake. And of course, other famous names, Hamilton, the leading family of Scotland. And here we have a red-haired Jesus from the same painting as Minos from The Last Judgment by Michelangelo with red hair and uh, a very strong-looking Jesus. And here we have a young Jesus with a probably his red-haired sister kissing him, red-haired Jesus, and a young boy and an older boy here, perhaps his brothers. And here we have a ginger-haired Jesus on a in this... Uh, stained glass from the Holy Trinity Church in Sunderland, UK, according to the Ministry of Truth, the only ginger-haired Jesus in England. And here we have Joseph with a red-haired or strawberry blonde infant Jesus by Guido Reni. And then again, we have another red-haired Jesus with a red-haired uh, Mary, the presentation uh, at the temple by Bartolo di Freddi. And, you know, it, you can notice these are the only two white-skinned people here. The, the men all have dark skin. They have gray hair, so we don't know their original hair color, but they all have dark skin. And, uh, and we have the triptych, the Masonic tri triptych here. But I think this is an accurate historical portrayal with dark-skinned people and Mary and Jesus having white skin, which we'll get to later. And here we have... Uh, a, a, a painting called the Sagrada Familia uh, del Pajarito, or the Holy Family with a Little Bird, by Bartolome uh, Murillo. And this is in the Prado, and it comes from about 1650. And again, he has strawberry blonde hair. And here we have a Lamentation of Christ by Hus von Cleve from 1530s. Red-haired Jesus, red-haired Mary Magdalene, Red-haired Virgin Mary, Mary reading a book, a printed book, not a scroll, uh, and indicating that she has education, she can read. And Ellis, uh, Ralph Ellis says that Mary Magdalene was the richest woman in Jerusalem. And of course, here we have the skull and crossbones, which connects us to Yale and to the Jolly Rogers and some seriously appetizing looking meal here. And here we have Carrer de Goltiota in Barcelona, Spain, or the Street of the Skull, where I think G uh, the crucifixion happened. And a red-haired Madonna with a red-haired infant Jesus, perhaps by Leonardo da Vinci. The Quran calls M Mary Miriam, mentions her 70 times, and calls her the greatest of all women. O oh, Mary! God has chosen you and purified you. He has chosen you above all the women of creation. 342, Surah 342. The Quran names no other woman besides Mary. The Quran refers to Mary more often than does the New Testament. The 19th Surah bears, bears her name, Mir, Miriam, and that's like a chapter in the Old Testament or the New Testament. The Quran calls Mary or Miriam the sister of Aaron, who in the Old Testament had a sister named Miriam, the prophetess, Exodus 15.20. The Quran calls Mary's father Imran, and the Old Testament calls the father of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Amran, Exodus 7.20. This has caused huge problems chronologically, because under our standard chronology, the uh, Moses and Miriam and Aaron lived about 2500 BC, and Mary and Jesus lived about, you know, AD zero, more or less. 
and uh, but it fits perfectly with the chronology that I'm trying to present of the Old Testament and the, the Torah and the Exodus occurring at the same time as the New Testament. The Quran mentions Jesus by name or other reference more than any other person and calls him Isa ibn Maryam, or the son of Miriam. And here we have Echehomo by uh, Abraham Janssen's 1560-1632, another red-haired Jesus, a strong-looking Jesus, with an even stronger-looking red-haired man next to him, and the older man on the right uh, has red in his beard. And here we have Echa Homo by Jose de Ribera, and he, it, although it's very dark, he does have red up here on his forehead. And the red-haired Jesus and red-haired Virgin Mary and red-haired John the Evangelist by Gentile de Fabriano. And, uh, of course, you know, red-haired people shouldn't wear orange, as we saw with the Sarah Ferguson. And here we have uh, La Pietà by Angelo di Cosimo, also known as the Bronzino, from 1503 to 72. And Agnello means lamb, like the lamb of God. And again, red-haired Jesus, uh, red-haired Mary Magdalene, and we can't see the hair on uh, Mary. And here we have Mary Magdalene, the mirror bearer by Francesco Bianchi Buonavita, and it has a lot of symbolism in it. Uh, Mary has pearls, here, it probably goes around the whole fashionable hat that she has. She has more pearls here. She has four more larger pearls here and some large red stone, maybe a ruby, I don't know. And uh, she's holding a, va uh, a jar, which uh, uh, perhaps the anointing jar. And notice her two fingers are joined here, the two middle fingers. We'll see this again. And uh, uh, the pearls, uh, Represent, represent perfection and, and incorruptibility, and also uh, fertility, and they represent the moon. And uh, they come buried in an oyster shell, or a klippa, uh, or, which means shell in Hebrew. And in the Kabbalah, the klippa uh, surrounds holiness. You know, and some Kabbalists talk about the klippa as being evil, but the klippa also can protect holiness. And here we have uh, Jesus and the Doctors of Faith by a follower of uh, Jose de Ribera about 1630. And notice that this man has a book, a printed book with pages made out of paper, not a scroll. And here we have the Nativity by Martin Schongar, again a red-haired Mary. It's hard to see the hair on this little infant, but perhaps red. And, and we have a, a cow or cattle and a, and a donkey or an ass. These are very important symbols. And here we have uh, the Adoration of the Magi uh, uh, by uh, uh, Hans Memling. And it's about 1480. And it looks like an unfinished painting. It, uh, you can see this man has his cloak on the back is just some lines here. And this effeminate looking black man has no left arm and seems to have a missing part of his back. But again, we have a, a red-haired uh, infant Jesus, a red-haired Mary, a red-haired Magi, and maybe some fancy tattoos on his arms, or maybe some type of tunic. Another red-haired man here uh, with uh, spurs that indicates a horseback rider. And again, a, a cow or a cattle and a donkey. And here we have another nativity by Martin uh, DeVos, 1577. Red-haired Mary, red-haired little girl, I think that's a little girl, blonde-haired two little boys given some gang signs here. And a lot of red-haired families will have blonde other siblings. Not everybody comes out red. And a red-haired Jesus uh, lying on top of some what looks like wheat and on a wicker basket, all, all very symbolic. The stable, stable or manger has occulted meaning. The stable commonly represents a place to house cattle or other animals. The stable also represents the temple enclosure. The manger comes from mangiare or manger to eat and symbolizes child sacrifice. In Latin, mandra means stable, a stall, or a column of pack animals, but it also means checkerboard, 
the New College Latin and English Dictionary, page 257. The basket symbolizes the ark, as with the baby Moses and with Noah. Cattle represent the common man in Masonic symbolism, as do sheep. And, you know, the, the legends of the cowboys uh, fighting the sheep herders in the American West, I think that has very occulted meaning, and that we have two groups of rulers, one that looks at us, at us as cattle, and the other that looks at us at, as sheep. And then the mother, or madre, or matrix, give birth to the child into the material world. And here we have the stable, or the checkerboard, the mandra, and the on and off. The, the child comes into the matrix here. The one and the two, the black and the white, the fire and ice. Uh, and you can see it even looks sort of like a hologram. And this is where the child comes into the material world from the spiritual world. And Matthew 1 and Luke 3 give different genealogy. Interestingly, both have Aminadab, or Akhenaten, in the line. Matthew 1.4 and Luke 3.33. And uh, uh, that goes back to the Quran saying that uh, uh, Miriam, the uh, sister of Aaron and Moses, became Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus. Neither heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Timothy 1.4. And these all have really interesting numbers. 1.4, 1.4, 3.3.3, three, 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 the double seven. Uh, in the Middle Ages, the time of Jesus, kings would obsessively, obsessively compile genealogies to establish their rightful claims to the throne. Quote, biblical poise, old and new, on matters of genealogy are, in any event, something to be handled with circumspection. Robert Eisenman, Maccabees, Zadokites, Christians, and Qumran. And we're going to see Robert Eisenman again in the next video. I think he really uh, is one of the most important biblical scholars of the 20th century and into the 21st century. He's, I think he's still alive, uh, he, although he's in his 80s. Mary was sleeping child by Andrea Mantegna, uh, 1465 to 70. As with other historical and biblical figures, we don't get Mary's real name. The name Mary or Maria means the seas in Latin. It, yes, it has become a name today, but I don't think Mary had this name or Miriam. I don't think she had that name. And here we have a, another red-haired Mary. And it looks like more middle-aged Marys, uh, in middle ages, not she's not that she's in the middle, uh, in her middle ages. Uh, and we have an angel with a lute, a uh, instrument from the middle ages and Renaissance. Another angel with a harp, again with a book, printed book, little Jesus, red-haired Jesus reading the book. So more indications that this happened in Europe in the middle ages. And here we have a very interesting painting, the Penitent Magdalene by El Greco, 1576 to 78. And here, if we look at her, Mary has red hair. She's doing this hand sign with the two fingers together, which we saw before on Mary Magdalene. She has her left hand over a skull. She has a printed book again, indicating her education. And the skull we saw before uh, with the La Pieta, with the skull and crossbones. The skull has a very important symbolic meaning, and I can't tell you that I actually know it. I've read lots of different uh, people's ideas of what it means, but I don't. I didn't go to Yale. I don't belong to Skull and Crossbones. I don't have George Bush's uh, cell phone number, so I really don't know. Uh, Mary means seas in Latin. Magdalene may come from Migdal or Migdala in Hebrew, meaning tower or watchtower or castle. Strong's Hebrew 4026. A tower by the sea could mean a lighthouse, or a pharaoh, or a pharaoh. And again, that takes us back to Akhenaten, and to Moses, and to Aaron. And here we have the penitent Magdalene doing the hand sign by Guido Reni. And here we have a penitent Magdalene doing the hand sign by Titian Vecelio, 1533. And here we have Maria de, de Medici doing the hand sign by Agnolo di Cosimo Tori. And Tori, of course, means tower, like Mary Magdalene, a.k.a. Il Bronzino, the red-headed one, uh, around 1553, and it's in the Galleria degli Uffizi, which is in Florence. 
And Uffizi became the modern Italian Ufficio, and in modern Italian uh, it means office, which comes from the Greek word office, which means snake or serpent. So we have the we get the gallery of the serpents. And here we have El Caballero de la Mano in El Petro, which means the gentleman with his hand on his chest, doing the hand sign again, and by El Greco 1580 in the Prado in Madrid. And caballero, or horseman, can also refer to the Kabbalah, or Kabbalist. And here we have Cosimo I de' Medici doing the hand sign, and by Jacopo uh, Carucci, also known as Pontormo, 1538, and it's the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. The Metropolitan seems to have a lot of these hand sign paintings. Here we have Columbus doing the hand sign by Sebastiano del Piombo, 1519, also in the Metropolitan Museum. And here we have Christ carrying the cross and doing the hand sign by El Greco, not with red hair though. And this is also in the Metropolitan Museum. And here we have Ignatius Loyola doing the hand sign, but I could not find out the, the painter or when this, or, or where this comes from. And here we have God himself. Uh, doing the hand sign, the separation of earth and waters by Michelangelo Buonarroti in the Sistine Chapel, and God is not only doing the hand sign, but he's given a joyride to the two carabim on his back. In an article titled Secret Hand Gestures and Paintings in Acta Biomedica on February 24, 2020, the authors speculate this hand sign may mean crypto-Jewish Marano, so left out a P there, recognition, Freemason membership and rank, Satanism, multiple V's and ones for 666, the Medici family membership, and Ignacio de Loyola's gesture for atonement of sins. Basically, they're saying they have no idea what it actually means. And I have no idea either. If anybody does, I'd like some suggestions. And here again, we have Mary Magdalene reading by Piero di Cosimo, 1495, reading a book, a printed book. And she has pearls, like the uh, earlier Mary Magdalene, which symbolized the moon and fertility and long life and purity. And here we have uh, red-haired Mary Magdalene by Frederick Sandus, who had an obsession with red-haired people. And again, uh, another Frederick Sandus painting of Morgan Le Fay, the half-sister of King Arthur and chief queen of the nine sorceress princesses, perhaps the wife of Merlin. According to Geoffrey of Monmouth, Morgan apprenticed with, the, with Merlin on the Isle of Avalon, the original sorcerer and his, sorcerer and his apprentice. And here, uh, just read here, type three albinism includes a form of albinism called Rufus oculocutaneous albinism, which usually affects dark skinned people. Affected individuals have reddish brown skin, ginger or red hair, and hazel or brown irises. Type 3 is often associated with milder vision abnormalities than other forms of cutaneous albinism. Apparently, people with albinism have some eye problems. I, uh, and the word albino derives from the Latin albus and Spanish albo, meaning white. And alba in Spanish means dawn, so you have a connection between the dawn and the albino people. And Catalonia has towns named Lalbi, Lalbiol, and Albons. Albion refers to the island of Great Britain, some say because of the White Cliffs of Dover. Albion also refers to Scotland, Alban in Scottish Gaelic, Alban in Welsh and Cornish, the albino invasion. And Al here we have albino African Americans with red hair, and I put African Americans in quotes because Dane Calloway and others on YouTube have shown, I think, pretty conclusively that the people we call African-Americans lived in America before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. The New Testament also has an apostle Thomas, which is called Didymus, John eleven sixteen. In Greek, Didymus means twin, Strong's Greek 1324. In Aramaic, Thoma or Thomas means twin. In Hebrew, Taum means twin, Strong's Hebrew 8380. So the New Testament calls this apostle the twin twin, as in towers. In Hebrew, Taum, as in Tom, in English, means perfect, complete, undefiled, upright, Strong's Hebrew 8535. This definition and parts of the Dead Scrolls and Apocrypha will help connect the twin in Jesus 
to the Old Testament. The Gospel of Thomas adds a twist to Thomas Didymus's name. Miraculously, in 1945, an Egyptian peasant digging in the dirt found the Nag Hammadi's library that contained a massive amount of biblical era writings, including the Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas begins, These are the secret sayings which the living Jesus spoke and which Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down. So now we have twin Judas twin, which reputable scholars see as a real name and not some sort of hidden identity. Reputable scholars means those who have attended the best universities and agree with the reputable consensus, such as the timeline. Fair to agree with the consensus means ostracism and scorn. If you step outside the box, people laugh at you. Thomas Judas Didymus. Thomas means twin and Didymus means twin, but what does Judas mean? Judas comes from the Old Testament Judah or Yehuda, which means praised or a son of Jacob and Leah. Strong's Hebrew 3063. It derives from another word, yada, which means to throw, to cast, and most importantly, to shoot arrows. Strong's Hebrew 3034. Ralph Ellis has argued that King Jesus led a large army consisting mostly of skilled archers. Archery played a big part in medieval warfare, or so historians tell us. So the archer twin. Diana or Artemis, the hunter and twin sister of Apollo, with red hair, doing a hand sign, with an ark, horns, or keren, on her head like Moses, and by Guillaume Seignac. And here we have Artemis of Ephesus with eggs. This relates to her to Isis, who among other attributes had that of a bird goddess. Her dress represents the fish tail. The fish relates to Christianity. And here we have Mary Magdalene and the red egg. After the crucifixion of Jesus, Magdalene went to the emperor Tiberius and told him Jesus had risen. Tiberius mocked her, saying Jesus had as much chance of rising from the dead as the egg in her hand turning red, which it did. Why she carried an egg in the first place, the legends don't tell us, but I think it has to do with the hidden mysteries in plain sight. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine, Abraham's, own bowels, shall be thine heir. Genesis 15.4, which comes to 19. His own bowels, not from a woman. And a young Diana the huntress with red hair. And Diana the big mama with red hair. The expulsion of Ishmael and Hagar by Adrian van der Werf about 1699. And Hagar and Ishmael have red hair. The Muslim Arabs view Ishmael as their progenitor. And here we have red-haired uh, dyed Muslims, or a couple of these people look like they might actually have uh, natural red hair. And because the prophet Muhammad himself supposedly had red hair. And people say he dyed his white beard red as he grew older. And here we have red hair from Muhammad's beard in the great mosque of Madrin in southeast Turkey. In the Book of Thomas, the contender, also miraculously found at Nagahabadi in 1945, Jesus says to Thomas, Now, since it has been said that you are my twin and true companion, examine yourself and learn who you are, in what way you exist, and how you will come to be. So we learn that Jesus himself had a twin brother, like Elvis, who had a twin named Jesse Garon, as in the Essenes. And, you know, some people say that uh, Jesse Garon became Donald Trump, which would mean that Donald Trump uh, is 85 now, born in January 8, 1935, rather than June 14, uh, uh, 1946, which would totally screw up the gematria for everybody that's been working on this for a long time. Some scholars have argued that the twin appeared as the resurrected Jesus after the crucifixion. Others have argued the Romans crucified the twin, not Jesus. Ralph Ellis argues Jesus didn't die on the cross, but after Joseph of Arimathea took him off the cross, the Romans tended to him and later banished him to Chester, England, in the fortress of Deva, or Deva, Dewa, Victrix, the largest fort in Roman Britannia, and that's in his book, King Jesus. 
I tend to credit Ellis's theory, but that brings up the questions of what happened to the twin, and can we deduce the real name of the twin? And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was that holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? William Blake, Jerusalem. Plato and the Republic banned the wrong sort of poets like, like Blake. And inside Deva Vitrix, archaeologists found the remains of a large building, 30 by 60 meters, in the shape of a Vesica Pisces, subdivided into 12 alcoves. It had a private bathhouse and water fountain in the center, a very expensive water fountain with lead pipes. Ellis suggested represents the zodiac, a central feature of Judaism during the Talmudic period. And some scholars say this amphitheater from Deva Vitrix represents King Arthur's Round Table. An English heritage, a UK charity that manages monuments, says no archaeological evidence supports this claim, which probably means the claim has a lot of validity and we shouldn't look at it. Before ending this video, a few words about the New Testament dating and authorship. Reputable scholars put its authorship between 70 AD and around 1580. I think the New Testament events occurred around what we call the 13th century today, 13, the master of time. Most scholars agree that Saul Paul wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. Ralph Ellis thinks, and I agree with him, that Flavius Josephus, Josephus, Josephus played the role of Saul Paul. I also think Josephus played the role of Rabbi Yohanan ben Sakai, the principal founder of rabbinical Judaism. A historical person may have played all three roles, but this would move the New Testament events to the 16th century, not the 13th. And I think that may actually happen. I think it might have happened in the 16th, but unfortunately all the actual historical uh, events in Europe that I have date from the 13th or so. Scholars date ancient books by two principal methods, textual context and paleography. Paleography means old and writing. Its name presupposes ancient. Paleography looks at the writing style and dates documents based on the form of letters and words, as well as writing materials. For example, paleographers assure us the community rule of the Dead Sea Scrolls dates from 100 to 75 BC, although the text seems to indicate the time of John the Baptist, James the Just, and Jesus. And, and we have to remember that the Dead Sea Scrolls for most of the 40 or 50 years before they really came out to the public, the Catholic Church controlled them, in, and, and in particular the uh, Father DeVoe, who was a Dominican, and uh, controlled them. And of course, Dominicans gave us uh, the uh, the uh, Inquisition. And here, here we have uh, some um, paleography that we can do ourselves. Okay, on the left we have a memo pad of George Nicolopoulos, M.D., a prescription to someone named Elvis A. Presley, August 15th, 1777, uh, which, you know, 1977, 1877, who really knows. And the doctor is trying to treat this guy, keep him balanced, he gives him some Dilaudid to keep him mellow, some Quaalude to mellow him out some more, some Dextazerine to offset the Quaalude and the in the uh, Dilaudid, some Percodon to balance off the three prior drugs, some Amital to wake him up when he passes out, and then Bifetamine, I guess, just for daily practice. And here on the left, we can see a much older writing from the more primitive handwriting. And here, scholars have identified this word as dir, dir, and in this short vowel sound, rather today we say dear, uh, indicates this happened before the great vowel shift in the English language, so before Chaucer. And then here we have Tooth, tooth Fairy, and this alternative spelling style also indicates sometime in the Dark Ages, and the belief in fairies indicates sometime pre-Christian pre, pre uh, uh, Great Britain. And then my puppy named Snowflake, and Snowflake indicates a cold climate, so probably the Scottish Highlands, or maybe as far north as Aberdeen. And she lost her two, and that again, the misspelling, that indicates maybe the 6th, 7th, 8th century. And then uh, I want, we think this means want, a hot pink princess. And scholars uh, universally agree that the 
a request for a hot print, pink princess, princess indicates that a young prince or perhaps an aspiring duke or earl wrote this for looking for a wife. And here we can't decipher this, but perhaps the person's name name had James in it, James something. And this might perhaps say, please. So all in all, scholars agree that this dates between about the 6th to the 8th century, give or take 50 years. And now Josephus Paul worked for the Romans, according to historians, hence the name, last name Flavius. Paul's version of Christianity, Christianity differs sharply from the version in the book of James, an apocryphal text that we will see in the next video. Paul preached justification by faith and kneeling to the God-appointed authorities. Quote, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are be are, be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Romans 13, 1-2. Bend the knee and wear a mask or burn in hell. The masses always believe the big lie. Quote, all this was inspired by the principle, which is quite true in itself, that in the big lie there is always a certain force of credibility, because the broad masses of a nation are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature than consciously or voluntarily, and thus in the primitive simplicity of their minds they more readily fall victims to the big lie than the small lie, since they themselves often tell small lies in little matters, but would be ashamed to resort to large-scale falsehoods. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. And this is the trauma-based mind control that everybody goes through daily. The big lie. We do not have original sin. A doctrine of fear and servitude preached to us by the rulers. We do not need a savior, a deus ex machina, to come to the rescue like a superhero in the movies or TV or comic books. Each person must live to act righteously, do good works, and stand up to evil. The failure to live righteously and to do good works leads to return to the matrix. 2 Maccabees 1243. Judas Maccabee did this noble thing because he believed in the resurrection of the dead. Thank you for watching. The next video will continue the tale of Jesus in the Old Testament. It will focus on the doctrines of James the Just, who believed in righteousness, mercy, and good works, as described in the Good Dead Sea Scrolls and some Apocrypha.